Okay, sorry about that. My memory card only goes 30 minutes. I need to move along. If they have forgiven their sins by God's written word in this day of the Lord, that, uh, yeah, it, it says, Malachi 3, God says, I'm sending my messenger before me to clear the way, and uh, I'm going to return to my temple, and the angel of the covenant you desire is already on the way. There's a lot of reason for that. But... Um, it's part of the reason to have Elijah there. He knows the angel. Okay? And the angel gives him the covenant. And I am him. And as David, I have the covenant of friendship. Also, they're in this book. I'm having, I have a, it's tough to get this book published. It's just too strange for publishers. They're just like, well, we publish lots of Jewish books. but And to some extent, it sounds like I'm attacking Judaism. Uh, some people think, well, maybe he's a Christian. That, that's the furthest thing that could ever be because of my stand on Jesus. You know, The biggest liar and deceiver in the history of mankind, and I can back that statement up and have in the book and on video. And he's a myth. Never existed. That heaven is being created for only the Jewish people. Well, that's what the Bible says. That God's righteous servant of Isaiah 53 is a Gentile, according to the scripture. Things you never, you never heard of better saying. Startling. And uh, for the most part, God's had me believe that uh, I'll convert in Jerusalem. We're signed by name. I mean, to me, I'm just a servant. I, I was an atheist for 50 years. Uh, I'm not, I, I never prayed to God. I got shot to the abdomen on a ranch when I was 18. And God never came into my mind. I, not one thought, not, oh my God, please save me, I'm dying. And I was. But uh, that's just the way I was. There's a book about it, too. There's a chapter on getting shot and almost having my leg cut off and this or that. And that, see, the, the man describing 53 is as lowly as the people in the first six verses because they're not religious and they're, not, they, they're just, they're sick with guilt. But what's the book about? It's about God finds a man with all these problems and turns him into the righteous servant who makes the many righteous. And he does that with the five refinement, which he intentionally left out. But you can find it in Jonah, Job, and in Ezekiel. That God's righteous servant of Isaiah 53 is a Gentile, according to the scripture. God comes from Adam. Okay, he wasn't allowed to go th uh, through Adam in the Exodus, because Moses wasn't. He's in Moses. Moses is a man of divine beings, God and the person of the Spirit within him. He spoke to God. That's how God speaks to you. He enters you and manipulates your mind. But, uh, yeah, it's not through your ear, although he can make it seem like that if he wants to, which is pretty rare. But he's coming from, Gen uh, oh, uh, Edom was founded by the children of Esau who never married a tribal uh, woman, always Gentiles. So his children are considered Gentiles, and Adam is considered uh, both Christianity and uh, Gentile lands. And that's where he's coming from. And it says in 63 where you see that, of the Jewish people, of my peoples, or of the peoples, but he's talking about his people. None are with me. Well, he's got to have a representation. He's got to have a man. He's got to have a prophet like Moses that he talks to and tells Moses or he tells me, go tell the Jewish people this and that, Keith. Tell them this is where I want my temple. This tract of land right here. Tell them we're typing up the specifications for that temple. 
I want to live amongst my people again. They came back, I'm coming back. They don't have to be sin free to be doing anything special. I'm bringing a covenant of sin forgiveness and friendship. For all these rabbis, and that includes Michael Scoback, Jews for Judaism, saying, well, if we were all as sinless as possible, as humanly possible, then maybe God would come back. But that's not it. She says, y'all come back, make the land bloom again, restore the cities. I'll make a new covenant with you, which is really just an amendment, by the way. He's always been your God. You've always been his people, Jewish people. And that's my whole life. My whole life is Israel, the Middle East, but in particular the Jewish people and the Hebrew Bible. I'm very fluent in the New Testament, too. <laughs> he taught me that first. That Jesus, that Jesus being a Jew, cannot be God's righteous servant. Because that's who he's describing. God's prophet like Moses, the righteous servant. His representation in the day of the Lord. That God's righteous servant is familiar with disease. And crushed with disease, blemished, and could never be an offer for sacrifice, afflicted by God. That's why I said, that's why I suffered cancer. God didn't ask Ezekiel, He seized him and put him in the fire of fire. He didn't have to ask you anything. And you know what you always say to him? Okay. You just do. It's a natural response. But I suffered it. So that I could teach that 53 cannot be. The man described is blemished. He's crushed with disease. He's afflicted by God. He's got some kind of birth defect. That's not Jesus Christ either. Either one of them. He said, yeah, I, I afflicted you with disease. I crushed you with cancer. I chose to. He says, I know you would have offered yourself for guilt or offered yourself to be the righteous uh, servant who makes the many righteous. But I needed it. I needed it for Christianity. To just make them... This just said they're going to... When they hear it from me, it's going to sound a lot louder, louder than any anti-missionary out there. Okay. That a host of the Lord's host is a man and divine beings. That the captain of the Lord's host is a man of divine beings, and is a Gentile. Three verses in Joshua is so packed with information. Captain Lord's host, who is a harbinger of Moshe, the righteous and the righteous servant. He's a harbinger. He is a Gentile. Lies is a Gentile too, by the way, if you don't know that. That's clear from the scripture. Uh, but he says, Joshua asked him, are you one of us, Israelite, or of the enemy? And he says, no, I'm the captain of the Lord's host. Now I have come. After those three verses, you never see him again. He's a, he's a sign, a, an omen, a harbinger of what's to come one day. And that day is, is here, starting in 1948. Israel was formed, and they started making the land bloom. It is so beautiful right now. I cannot wait to get there. And quite frankly, God's ready to, he said. He said, I'm very patient, but I definitely want to get there. Oh, the stories I had, people, 16 years, night and day, and he doesn't sleep, and so I don't get to very much. I found out I can go four days without sleep. I didn't think that was possible for me. That God's righteous servant becomes a man of divine beings when God's spirit, who is the angel of his presence, the angel of the Lord, and the Holy Spirit, alights upon him in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. That God would really redeem the Jewish people and in the same manner that he did it in the Hebrew Bible with one man. That the time to come of Jeremiah 31 began when the state of Israel was created in 1948. 
and that God's righteous servant fulfills and completes the remaining prophecies of God in this day of the Lord. The only thing left is, where are the four righteous servants? Well, I've explained that. And the two covenants, I've mentioned that. That's it. They need to be delivered. Sin forgiveness, be a holy seed, like the exiles, build another temple. God calls it his eternal temple. He doesn't plan on anything ever happening to it. Verse 4. He who was enthroned in heaven less. The Lord mocks at them. <laughs> He's laughing at these kings and regions like they can do anything to him and me. Verse 5. He then speaks to them in anger, terrifying them in his rage. Okay, then he speaks to them in anger. The Lord speaks through his scripture and his righteous servant. It's my words. <laughs> my words. His wrath is on the Gentiles. It's passed to them, and the Christians particularly, in Isaiah 51. My description starts in 52. Yeah, he's got to have a guy, a man, a representation. Not just to deliver covenants, but to take the wrath to the Christians and Gentiles the kings of the nations. And uh, yeah, this is not a messianic era. Not only that, if there is one, and it starts with me arriving, there's not going to be any rabbis in it. They've all been dismissed. Reckoned with and dismissed when Moshe comes. And the scripture says, he appoints me as the only teacher he recognizes. All others are dismissed before him. And there's videos on it. Yeah, they hear my anger. And even though I've been through the fire for 16 years, and I don't feel it on the inside. Mostly I don't feel anger like I once did. Uh, I used to get in a lot of fights, which you can find in my book, the book on me that God wrote, my autobiographer. Um, but I can still get angry. But it takes a lot to push me these days. He's really tempered my emotions across the board. Verse 6, But I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I don't remember what the answer to this one is. But I have installed my king on Zion. Today is prophetic for the righteous servant who is to clear the way for the Lord to return to his temple, which must be rebuilt first. When the temple is built, God will return to it suddenly, and his righteous servant will be installed in an abode to be honored in Jerusalem near the temple. He won't leave me. Even when the temple is built, I'll take him there every day. He goes where I go. He's inside of me, and he does not leave, ever. I've asked him, can't you Go, don't you have something to do in heaven for a little while? You're wearing me down to a nub. He just laughed. He's got quite a humor. Y'all probably don't realize that. Quite a personality. And so does the angel. He's something else. He's, he's my best friend. The angel of God. And if you, if you can see the person I was, and for this to be happening to me, it's so far beyond the imagination. It's ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, this, this definitely has happened. Let me tell all of the decree, the Lord said to me, you are my son. This is what the Christians put in Jesus. No. I have fathered you this day. You are my son. Israel was God's first son, and then David, and then Solomon. Son of God is a term of endearment. And signifies a close relationship with God. This verse was originally for King David. Today it is for God's righteous servant, Moshe, and that is me. And we are very friendly to each other. Ask it of me, verse 8, and I will make the nations your domain, your estate, the limits of the earth. Okay, your estate's the limits of the earth. God's righteous servant is described in Isaiah 53, which provides in verse 12, Assuredly, 
I will give him the many as his portion. He shall receive the multitude as his spoil. The many and the multitude will cover earth, and there will be Jewish people who have been scattered throughout the world. Verse 9, you can smash them with an iron mace, shatter them like putters wear. Them are the world leaders and heads of nations, leaders of states and government organizations, and leaders of religious foundations and organizations, including churches and leaders of groups of people in general, and those that promote anti-Semitism and the conversion of Jews to Christianity. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 4 says that God's anointed shall strike down a land with the rod of his mouth. Not a mace. And slay the wicked with the breath of his lips. It will be with the Hebrew Bible and the words God has his anointed speaking right. He controls my words. Verse 10, so now, O kings of the nations, be prudent, accept discipline, you rulers of the earth. Oh, I'll be reading it to the Gentiles, <laughs> Christian. Oh, yeah. If we ever get, if this thing will kick off before I get too old. Verse 11, serve the Lord in all, tremble with fright. Verse 12, pay homage in good faith. Lest he be angered, and your way be doomed in the mere flash of his anger. Happy are all who take refuge in him. That would be me. <laughs> it's kind of, you know, metaphoric, symbolic. It was written for different times. That's it. Next chapter, 47. And so, we, like I said, there's 50. I may do a video on the book summary. It takes all 50 chapters and in one paragraph, sometimes two, summarize what that chapter's about. It's real helpful if you ever... Well, anyway, next up, chapter 47, David, shunned and despised, Psalm 69. And that's in Isaiah 53. This descendant of David that I'm saying is described in 53, he shunned, despised, and held on no account. We accounted him plagued. David went through it too before he became king. Anyway, there'll be a video on it soon. I gotta upload the ones I got right now. I'm still waiting on two from yesterday and now I've got this one. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it. Remember, I'm redoing all those. You, you get some of these videos and you go, oh my God, I can't even always see this guy and I can't, he, he's, I can't even hear him talking hardly. They're getting, they're getting phased out. And th these are a lot clearer and look a lot better. So, bear with us.